I'd like to say that I think the magnitude of this lead problem in water is big, that every time we lift another rock, it looks a little bit worse in terms of how this is. We see lots of granularity, e.g. some places are fine, other places are terrible, and stuff like this. I think this needs to be part of a national debate. And I think that Flint is great, and I, I think it's wonderful that the political class decided that we're going to help the people in Flint. But the people in Flint are not the only people at risk here. And so I think that what needs to happen is there needs to be people who say, no, we're not going to stand for dismantling of the program that's supposed to be looking at lead. And I don't think that we need to be kind of ignoring this. We need to devote some money. What I'm used to saying to people is, again, if Al-Qaeda dropped you know, lead into our water, we'd be all over this. So guess what? Pretend Al-Qaeda dropped lead into our water and we want to find out how bad it is. Let's make it part of you know, that kind of an assessment. Think of it in a different way. And this is permanent damage to your kids, your grandchildren, and by the way, you're going to get demented a little bit earlier too. <laughs> so this is no joke. This is really everybody. And if you care about your kids and yourself and your spouse and all that kind of stuff, then this is something that you should elevate. And politicians will react to this. And if we make it, again, a public health issue and not a political issue, I think we're a little bit more likely to see an appropriate degree of movement on this. Thank you. I'll second Jeff's comment. And I'll say another thing that the NIDWAC, the National Drinking Water Advisory Council recommendations push for that I think is critical is better coordination at the federal and state level between the various risk programs. Right now, here in Boston, city will spend thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 removing all the lead paint in someone's apartment that has a child in it. They are not allowed to spend a nickel on removing the lead service line. They will tell the homeowner that the home has been deleaded. They will certify that the home has been deleaded, and they can leave brass fixtures that have lead in them and a lead service line and not even test the water to say, well, you've got it, but it's not a problem, simply ignored entirely. Coordination across all these different exposures is the only way that we ultimately solve the issue of exposure to the child. We can talk about where the lead is, mm -hmm. but it's how that lead then gets to the child that we need to worry about. Absolutely. Eric? Um, and I think for, for my perspective, it's really about public knowing what is their lead in their home, in the community, uh, their schools, the restaurants that they go to. Um, and if you don't know, find out. Oftentimes, many city offers a free testing if you request it, or uh, conduct your own um, certified laboratory testing. Mm -hmm. And I think also for the rural cities in America, we really have to uh, focus on them because these these are our future, future generations, and I think we cannot just let them live in the darkness of this black box Wild West. We have to uh, increase testing and awareness there, and when you rent and buy a home, please ask yeah. for it to be part of your inspection. So what is the lead water situation in the home, not just the paint? Thank you. Moitre, do you have a policy takeaway that you'd like to add? I think um, my, the, the one thing I would try to bring back into this discussion is this is something that affects everybody, but it affects some communities more, and we already know that. Um, there are already communities that are, are more vulnerable, and those children have multiple threats to their health, of which lead is one. Um, and what's um, the policy takeaway take is for these children who are exposed to lead, they should not also then be ex exposed to um, poor nutrition and a lack of uh, educational opportunities, early education and preschool education. I think we have a responsibility as we're sorting this out to make sure that you know we don't further put these children at risk um, and that we invest in them. Thank you. This concludes today's panel on lead contaminated drinking water and children's health. Thank you for joining us. We encourage you to continue the conversation on the forum website and at forumhsph.org and to watch the next forum on the opioid crisis. That will be May 5th at 12.30 p.m. Thank you.